Hey everybody, Denny Lawrence with Bear Crop Science. Today I want to spend about five minutes with you talking through one of our most notorious predators in corn and soybean production, the common water hemp. We'll explain why this weed is so difficult to manage uh, and give you the talking points to discuss with your customers how to deploy a strategy to hopefully win the war on water hemp. Okay, first I have this weed sequencing uh, tech sheet. It's a really nice uh, tech bulletin put together by a group of land grant universities, including Iowa State. Um, this bulletin features 16 weeds and it shows in sequence how they would germinate throughout the growing season based on heat units. So if we look down here at water hemp, a couple things to point out. Number one, it's marked as a red, okay? So it's, it's red on the chart, which means it has a long germination period. Up to eight to 10 weeks, it'll continue to germinate within your field. So that's problem number one, okay? Secondly, if we look down here and see that it's a late emerger, it shows uh, 350 growing degree days. That means it takes 350 growing degree days to get 10% of the population to germinate. So we get 10% uh, germination at 350 growing degree days. That's key to remember. Okay, next I have this really cool webpage I got from Jim McDermott. Uh, right there's the web address. Um, and what this allows you to do is select any area in the Midwest and it'll drill down and give you a 30 year average on heat unit accumulation. So I picked in this example, I have uh, near Ashton, Iowa, which is central to my territory in Northwest Iowa. And we're looking for 350 growing degree days to determine when water hemp would begin to emerge. And on a 30 year average, that day is May 24th. I checked other areas in the state and the range is from May 16th in Southwest Iowa to May 25th in Northeast Iowa. So basically the th third week in May, we would expect to see water hemp emergence begin uh, in Iowa and note that it will uh, continue to emerge for eight to 10 weeks after that date. Okay, now we've talked about, you know, the water hemp emergence. Let's talk a little bit about our planting window. So here I have some data from Purdue University. It features four weeds, velvet leaf, water hemp, giant foxtail, woolly cup. We're gonna focus on the red line, which is the water hemp. Um, there's a calendar across the bottom starting with May 1st, runs to the end of July, and then up to left axis is percent of cumulative uh, weed emergence. So how many weeds have emerged throughout that growing season? And if you really think about our planting window for at least for the Northwest Iowa, corn is generally you know mid to late April. Soybeans is gonna be kind of late April, early May, uh, when we would typically plant. If you look at our arsenal of soybean, or I'm sorry, arsenal of soil residual herbicides, whether it's corn or beans, most of them are gonna be applied at planting, okay? So as a general rule, we're gonna apply our first layer of pre-emerge herbicides, you know, at or near our planting date. Uh, most of these herbicides on the market today are gonna to give you somewhere between four to six to eight weeks of residual control, depending on the rates we apply and you know the the conditions of the field the amount of moisture the amount of heat the amount of microbial activity the amount of residue tie up the amount of sunlight all these things that that degradate herbicides uh, will will affect but for all practical purposes when you get you know four to six weeks into the season the ability of that herbicide to continue to uh, control weeds is starting to diminish okay so its useful life is that first four to six weeks and then it it'll continue to help but it's going to get weaker as the season goes on so in this example, let's say we plant beans the 1st of May and we fast forward 30 days uh, to June 1, which is this red line, and then June 15th is over here, which kind of just represents a normal, uh, normal post-emerge application window that we would have for either corn or soybeans. So let's say we come in June 1 with a post application and we clean up all the water hemp. You know, whatever we use, it works great. We, we smoke all the water hemp. We got 100% weed control uh, on that day. According to this research, now you've controlled 20% of the population in your field. Now it might be 30 or, or better, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 60, 70% of these water hemp haven't even emerged yet. So you're not gonna kill them with a post application and your pre-plant residuals starting to wear out. So how do we deal with that? Well, the answer is whether it's corn or beans, but is layering a second residual on in that post application. So in corn, a product like Harness Max, we put another layer of residual herbicide down uh, when we spray post apply, it gives you, you know, four to six weeks to get you to crop canopy. In soybeans, regardless of what we're using post emerge, adding a product like Warrant adds us another, you know, four to six weeks of residual to also get them beans into crop canopy and make sure that we don't have water hemp poking through in August, September. 
And so the best defense for, can, for having clean soybeans is making sure we're harvesting clean corn. So we have nothing going to seed in the year we raise corn. So we have a head start, you know, in the year we rotate back to soybeans. So hopefully you find this information helpful. Thank you for viewing.